So today we are going to uh, begin our discussion on the last module, uh, where our uh, focus would primarily be on the pathological side of human behavior. And that is the reason the uh, title of the module is psychological disorders. See uh, psychological disorders are usually discussed uh, at two three forums no, uh, as part of their course work. Uh, when uh, the doctors they get training for uh, uh, psychiatry okay, they also know learn about psychological disorders. <coughs> uh, usually in the university system uh, when you uh, do your masters in psychology one of the paper usually uh, know, talks about psychological disorder. Uh, within psychology if you specialize in the clinical branch of psychology then again uh, you go into the exhaustive details of psychological disorder and uh, many a times you would find that uh, in uh, courses which are otherwise uh, no, nowhere related to psychiatry or clinical psychology staff uh, even there you will find a mention of uh, psychological disorder. So, we fall in the last bracket uh, that although we are uh, aware that none of you are going to uh, become psychiatrists, none of you are going to become clinical psychologists, uh, but the primary intention of uh, knowing about selected psychological disorders is uh, that the more well informed you are, the higher are the chances that uh, you would be able to at least perceive a potential problem within yourself or uh, in people who are close to you. Uh, this is important because of two three reasons. One, uh, India is a country where you still have a very very few handful uh, of uh, practicing psychiatrists and clinical psychologists, whereas the population is extremely large. So, for a country of the size of ours, okay, it is surprising to know that we have only 3000 uh, uh, licensed psychiatrists. Okay, so, it is very small number that is one because you have a dearth of uh, experts available in your nearby surroundings. Two, we already have that uh, historical baggage like all of the cultures, all other cultures in the world where you have certain type of uh, practitioners of certain type of uh, faith of certain type of uh, know healing practices okay, who have a larger degree of uh, social acceptance compared to a practicing psychiatrist or clinical psychologist. Okay. So, somebody simply tells you that you are under the influence of a witch, you are the inf under the influence of a ghost. Okay. And there is somebody who uh, has an expertise in uh, know handling with the ghosts or uh, can uh, know identify uh, and go for witchcrafting. There is a larger degree of social acceptance for this compared to when you are told that I guess uh, you are suffering from X type of psychological disorder and therefore, you should meet a consultant psychiatrist. The acceptance level is very low. Because there are certain no so uh, stigma that has been attached to uh, no such type of things. Uh, you do not uh, hesitate uh, meeting a doctor in the health center because uh, you have certain uh, problem that you anticipate, but you would have lot of hesitation going to the counseling site uh, uh, and then finding out how to book a slot with the institute uh, consultant psychiatrist. You will find lot of reluctance. Okay. And three, many of us I would say or I would say most of us are completely ignorant about the aberrations that we usually see in the behavior, but nobody has told us that this is actually an aberration, we are not aware of it. Okay. And 
it uh, the ignorance goes to the extent that uh, because you find a good number of people now uh, displaying such type of behavior therefore the acceptance increases and you say ha ah, ha i know suresh had this ramesh had this no santosh had it so you have two three people who you say ha ah, i know there were three four and because i know there were three four with the problem therefore this is not a problem at all and then you would realize that gradually uh, no the problem uh, aggravates in many cases which you know finally drags the attention of uh, a consultant psychiatrist or a clinical psychologist but by that time you have already spent a lot of time either ignoring the disease neglecting the disease or whatsoever so uh, that's primarily the our intention behind uh, going through psychological disorders we first come to uh, a little bit of description which is not needed but it's good to have a uh, you know, overall view point and then we will narrow it down there are two ways of uh, classification of the disease are done one what is called as the icd classification the international classification of disease that's uh, the world health organization and then we have the dsm uh, classification which is done by the american psychiatric association no? it's called diagnostic and statistical manual okay four is the fourth version tr represents text revision okay so as of now the uh, latest version of dsm that we have uh, is dsm 4 tr uh, but by the time uh, you know we'll be uh, completing our end sem and by the time these video footages will be ready dsm 5 will come into being now what uh, dsm uh, 4 tr talks about the disorder is that you can have disorders first diagnosed in infancy childhood or adolescence okay so you could have one set of psychological disorders okay that has to do with uh, is early level of diagnosis infancy childhood or adolescence uh, for example mental retardation for example learning disorders motor skills communication disorders no these are the disorders which are uh, no usually identified much earlier in the life uh, perhaps i must have shared with you uh, that in our country the one of the biggest problem with uh, uh, early stage diagnosis is once again uh, the tendency in the parents to negate the diagnosis okay uh, i remember many 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 cases no uh, i'll tell you two cases uh, in particular one which is very old and one which is very very recent long back uh, there was uh, a camp that was being organized in uh, collaboration with one of the nationalized banks okay and uh, we already had the information that there was a locality in one of the cities in eastern up Uh, where the density of children with uh, mental retardation and autism cerebral palsy was very high the camp was organized there and uh, till 4 o'clock or so we had very very negligible number of uh, uh, parents coming forward with their children to the camp the idea was that uh, we would have uh, some uh, doctors some uh, psychologists who will make diagnosis psychologist will perform the test so and doctors will then recommend what has to be done okay and accordingly whatever is needed will be immediately given so if the level of the problem is known okay and the experts can tell you that fine no you need to go to this center or uh, no you need to go for such type of behavioral practices and so forth till 4 pm there was negligible presence these uh, stuffs were distributed and in certain cases where it was realized that it's only the possibility of training is there okay so some sewing machines and stuffs like that were also distributed and then by the time the camp was about to be closed uh, suddenly there was a large crowd okay but what was very sad to uh, experience was that the crowd was more interested getting stuffs which are being distributed free of cost they were not interested in diagnosis of their children 
okay and that is really a sad part of uh, you know the reality. Second I know somebody uh, very recently around uh, say 6, 8 months back or 1 year back I received a call from somebody who is known to me saying that uh, his daughter has delivered a baby who is now I do not remember the age perhaps 2 years, 3 years something like this. But the child shows uh, you know certain peculiar forms of behavior. The peculiar most peculiar form of behavior was that the child was deliberately trying to ignore contacts with any member of the family. Usually children love to play with the members of the family first, okay. but this child was you know extremely reluctant doing that. And in turn the child was much more passionate about playing with uh, mobile phones. Okay. One, uh, two verbal instructions given by the members of the family were uh, no, not adhered to uh, compared to the voice messages that was sent through mobile phone. This was how it was described and uh, some reason was given for that. Okay. Uh, I do not want to share the reason here, uh, but some reason was given by the father that uh, no, by the grandfather uh, that uh, no, my daughter has delivered a baby who is now this, uh, this age and now these are the problems. And the in most interesting thing was that he asked me do you think it is really a problem? I am sure all he wanted to hear was that no, no, no this is not at all a problem. <laughs> okay. and, uh, I knew what he wanted to listen to and therefore I did not very clearly say that this is a problem, but I made a whole uh, story out of it and said that you should certainly go and uh, meet an expert. Then he says that uh, fine I did meet an expert, okay. I did meet an expert and uh, the expert uh, said that the child seems to have a problem and he has suggested uh, you know a uh, certain uh, uh, training sessions for him. I said fine then uh, you have already considered an expert follow his advice and he said nay 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 I do not think he has been able to diagnose it. This was around one year back I think uh, two three months back now the daughter gives me a call earlier it was the grandfather now the daughter gives me a call uh, saying that uh, my father had talked to you and uh, I think uh, no, there is some problem and uh, I have already consulted a doctor, but you uh, know as uh, parents we want to do our best. So suggest the best place in India where I can take my child. I did suggest a, uh, an institution down south and I said that is the best place in the country you can go there. Okay. And, uh, the good part of the story was that uh, sometime back I received a call saying that just uh, today itself we have come back from that institute and the child has been diagnosed with something they used a word. Okay. I am happy to share this story with you that at least after these many experiences these two ex uh, stories that I have narrating has changed a lot. No? Parents have uh, gone for diagnosis. But again there is a sad part in this story too that uh, approximately one, one and a half year was lost in you know, diagnosis and uh, coming forward with what the child has should have been actually exposed to. Okay. And therefore it is very important that when you have uh, certain types of disorders where the likelihood of diagnosis is very, very high it can be you know within uh, you know, few months. Uh, no, the doctors can very easily predict or even the elderly members of the family can say that there seems to be a trouble. Okay. Uh, elderly members who have seen many, many children you know, growing in the family will very easily be able to tell you that this child has some peculiar behavior. What that peculiarity is that you need to get diagnosed. So this is uh, one set of disorder that uh, DSM talks about, two delirium, dementia, amnesia and other forms of cognitive disorders. Okay. Uh, usually all of this has to do with the decline in your 
cognitive ability either to retain information or to perform uh, on the basis of a given situation. Okay. Uh, I am told that uh, gradually uh, in our country there is an increase in uh, you know, the number of reported uh, patients in the clinic who belong to the second category. Okay. But once again there is a larger social acceptance that people say that are a, this happens in old age. Okay. And because it happens in usually you know uh, this is most of them will be apparent in 60 plus age group. Okay. Therefore, again there is a greater degree of acceptance. Okay. Third mental disorders due to general medical conditions. Okay. You find in DSM there is a whole lot of description about uh, certain type of mental disorders uh, which are basically a byproduct of some other form of uh, medical condition. Then substance related disorders all forms of substance abuses, whole sort of psychotic disorders, mood disorder, anxiety disorders, somatoform disorder, fictitious disorders, uh, dissociative disorders, sexual and gender identity disorders, eating disorder, sleep disorder impulse control disorders, adjustment disorder and personality disorders. So, you find a whole lot of description it is really such a thick book okay. and uh, truly speaking if you are really not that matured enough to really read uh, the whole set of uh, you know, diagnostic criteria there are chances that you would feel oh I also have a bit of this read the second disorder say, oh I also have a bit of this. Okay. So, you run on uh, that risk also therefore, there is no point reading the full text okay, of all types of uh, disorders. No? Let the experts read them okay, and then find out that find nothing lies in me everything the problem always lies outside me this is the experts view point. No? Uh, but usually those who are non experts and will still go through the text will have great difficulty for 15 20 days after reading the book because you become disoriented. No? most of the problem you find in yourself. Uh, for uh, certain reasons we are not interested in uh, discussion on any of these disorders except the last three. Okay. Uh, once again uh, I, as I told in the beginning that uh, I know that you are not going to practice either as a psychologist or as a psychiatrist. So, there is no point uh, no reading the disorders at length. Okay. I just wanted to show you the classification. Uh, we have already discussed impulse control disorders uh, just in our last module when we were talking about aggression. This module we would be uh, exclusively discussing about adjustment disorder and personality disorders only two types of disorders we would be talking about. Okay. But before we go into uh, all this uh, what we would do is uh, the way we did it for impulse control disorder. We will have exactly the way it is written in DSM 4 TR we will have the exact text here on our projection okay. and we will see you know all the diagnostic criteria for different types of uh, you know sub classification within this broad category of disorders. Okay. But let me tell you that uh, when you look at the diagnostic criteria uh, across disorders you would find that there is an overlap. Okay. It is same uh, know, um, uh, say for example, if you visit a physician and you just report that I have a you know, chronic stomach ache since last two days. Okay. So, uh, doctors can anticipate uh, that you have a gastroenteritis problem the doctor might anticipate that you have some inflammation within your stomach you can anticipate of uh, potential ulcer problem it can he can uh, anticipate uh, know that uh, probably you know there is an infection in your appendicitis and that needs to be taken out the doctor can say that fine perhaps there seems to be a stone in your gallbladder there could be multiple possibilities okay because when you read about the physical diagnosis of diseases you realize that you know a stomach ache is reported for all these types of diseases similarly you find overlap of uh, no shared symptoms in terms of psychological disorders also. Uh, say for example, uh, change in sleep pattern, okay. change in the eating practices, okay. uh, 
difficulty in uh, memory concentration or attention these you would find across these uh, disorders now in may most of the disorders you will find these things being uh, discussed therefore uh, the skill of the actual practitioner lies in what is called as differential diagnosis okay that there is a possibility of three different types of disorders but i am able to identify one out of the potential three and this is called differential diagnosis okay now before we go to uh, the adjustment and uh, personality disorders we will uh, know quickly look at uh, the basic causes of these psychological disorders biological uh, causes constitutional causes socio cultural causes and psychological or interpersonal causes <coughs> biological causes includes genetic biochemical and all types of organic uh, reasons constitutional is uh, no was advocated at one point in time has now been refuted okay therefore uh, we'll just touch on this issue and won't go into the details uh, socio cultural a whole set of um, uh, issues like mass violence okay uh, economic problems persistent economic problems uh, group prejudice or uh, you know a rapid social change and similarly psychological or interpersonal causes like pathogenic family uh, pattern maladaptive family structure pathological interpersonal relationship or sustained severe stress okay we'll very quickly you know go through uh, these causes to understand finally what leads to different types of problems okay once again the idea is uh, to uh make you realize that find these are the potential causes and therefore one can now be very very uh, cautious about the fact that certain type of things if it sustains for longer uh, in the family in the society then it could be detrimental for the uh, mental uh, fitness of the people as all of us know we have 23 pairs of chromosomes 22 autosome one uh, sex chromosome okay and because these chromosomes have hundreds and thousands of genes so uh, approximately we have 30000 to 40000 uh, genes and approximately 6 billion of our dna base pairs no one of the primary reasons uh, now for certain type of especially organic uh, disorders okay is certain form of mutation that takes place okay and genetic mutation has been found in whole lot of uh, no uh, disorders you remember uh, the first criteria where we talked about mental disorders which are diagnosed in early infancy childhood or adolescence no uh, mental retardation mostly it go the discredit goes to uh, the biological causes the mutation that takes place uh, you can have even certain types of uh, uh, no problems that comes later on in the life of the child Uh, for example if you are using uh, you know uh, the certain types of paints okay in the house and if children they you know they usually have the habit of taking peeling out the surface of the paint and then putting it in their mouth okay that can lead to poisoning in the brain okay so certain area of the brain decays it doesn't function okay uh, there could be a genetic anomaly that can lead to something like say uh, phenylketonuria for example okay where the phenyl aniline the phenyl per the phenyl pervic acid you know uh, doesn't disintegrate properly okay and uh, usually what you experience early in the child is a musty type of a smell so those who are uh, you know close to the children they'll you uh, know uh, smell that there is some musty smell you uh, know around the child but the problem basically lies that you uh, know uh certain enzymes do not break down okay and therefore certain uh, types of functions that usually our uh, body is able to perform okay it's not performed in those children but the interesting part is that in phenylketonuria for example okay it's basically the phenyl pervic acid that gradually accumulates in the body but finally it starts you no know, uh, influencing the cognitive abilities of the child okay so you will find a whole set of uh, disorders like this uh, no 
usually uh, you know when we talk of mutation either it could be germ line mutation which is basically inherited uh, or it could be a somatic mutation which is acquired okay uh, the example of uh, you know exposure to certain type of chemicals in the environment that is the example of the somatic mutation whereas germline mutation would be you know where you inherit a faulty gene pattern from uh, your predecessors okay uh, i don't know if you are aware of uh, there is a family in uh, uk uh, where uh, in alternate generations you find somebody in the family okay uh, who has severe language impairment okay and the severity of this language impairment comes out of the fact that the orofacial muscle this muscle no uh, the lip muscle and the muscle near it no which basically allows your uh, lips to move okay the orofacial muscle movement has tremendous retardation okay and then those uh, children born in that family who have uh, no this uh, deformity of the orofacial muscle they cannot speak properly okay it was found in one found in uh, next generation and generation after generation it is being repeated okay a uh, few years back uh, no the whole set of research took place uh, on the members of that family fortunately they agreed you know to give their uh, samples for dna analysis okay and now it has been analyzed that we have a gene called fox p2 gene which is primarily responsible for the movement of this orofacial muscle okay so one aberration at one point and then you know that some ability is lost or it is compromised with okay but in one case because of mutation it happens that's fine but if you have uh, you know perennial uh, you know persistence of that deformity that runs across generation okay that is what is called as germline mutation no that generations after generations in that very family it's uh, popularly you uh, know in the scientific literature you will find the mention of ke family okay ke family is the family uh, you know where you have a long list of people with uh, the problem in the movement of the orofacial muscles now there are uh, no other possibilities where you can you can have an acquired uh, mutation uh, something like say exposure to ultraviolet radiation okay that can also uh, lead to it but what is also important to uh, learn is that besides the genes okay uh, which are responsible for transcription and translation of dna into proteins okay uh, basically it is uh, know how these uh, genetic uh, uh, mutations or whether it is germline or acquired okay somatic uh, basically you know it somewhere it starts influencing uh, the protein uh, synthesis mechanism in the body okay and because protein has much to do with uh, the proper growth and development of the brain okay therefore many of the cognitive abilities are compromised with and once you have a uh, severe compromise that takes place with uh, the cognitive abilities you are bound to be considered to have one or the other type of disorders okay when we talk of the uh, brain anatomy means the structural uh, no uh, part of the brain or when we talk of uh, the four important neurotransmitters that primarily are considered to be responsible for holding ourselves to the baseline normal level okay or whether it is the, the receptors or the neural interconnections all of them therefore they depend on uh, the genes and therefore once you have problem with uh, no uh, any of these uh, no genetic mutation there could be a severe uh, impact on the protein synthesis mechanism finally uh, adversely influencing the brain uh, i'm sure you know right from your school days you must have seen several such images no that if you have uh, no Uh, two parents who are basically carrier of a particular problem okay uh, this is the usual mendelian principle no one is to two is to one in the first generation you will have okay uh, where the first child will not be affected two children will be carrier and one will be severely affected okay 
such type of informations are important for uh, you know uh, sharing with others. The reason being uh, that many a times uh, the discredit for having a particular type of child is always you know put on the mother okay, that uh, you have delivered a child like this okay. or the poor child who is basically genetically affected suffers a lot because there is a great degree of uh, rejection within the family and within the community because one has certain type of problems okay. and nobody you know even gets gives the discredit to the parents that because you were the carriers of the genes therefore this fourth child has developed one or the other type of a problem okay we are you know just uh, uh, going through one typical example we all know of uh, the adhd you know attention deficit hyperactivity disorder you know uh, you will find many uh, school going kids uh, you know uh, having certain type of uh, uh, behavior which the children, the teachers will report that oh he is the most uh, you know notorious child of the class okay and uh, some of them who are uh, taken to the doctors the doctors will tell that no this is a adhd child you know so you have an attention deficit you cannot focus attention on one thing for long so attention deficit but you also have hyperactivity you no know, you are hyperactive doing this doing that multiple things that you do okay now the behavior genetics research show an association between a variant of dopamine receptor gene and adhd symptom okay polymorphism of drd4 this is the dopamine d4 receptor gene okay is known as this is called the seven repeat form in the biological language okay and individuals who have this uh, no seven repeat form of drd4 okay they have thinner tissue where in their right orbitofrontal area so this is the right side of your cortex okay so the orbitofrontal area the inferior parietal area and the posterior parietal cortex of the brain you will have a thinner cortex this would mean uh, that the total number of neural interconnections that a normal child would have in these areas of the brain the children who have this uh, you know seven repeat form of drd4 okay they will not have those many neural interconnections okay now if you do not have uh, the neural interconnection the way others have this would ensure that neurologically you are different from other children and this neurological difference in terms of behavior is what is people call as adhd a uh, most naughtiest child no will always do this always do that and the teacher most of the time instead of retaining the child in the class will ask him or her to go and stand out okay in schools this can happen or that uh, teacher simply says no you just get up and go and sit in the corner so you are isolated from the rest of the class okay but nobody uh, you no know, accepts the fact that fine this child has a neural interconnection which is different from the rest of the children and therefore needs a complete different form of treatment in the classroom setup for all types of uh, learning abilities right from uh, academic to social skills to interpersonal skills okay and therefore the child has to be handled differently okay uh, fox p2 gene right now we uh, discussed about it that once you have the verbal uh, dyspraxia no you have this uh, faulty movement of the orofacial muscles okay you have severe uh, problem with the language communication and the discredit goes not to you but the discredit goes to the faulty gene the fox p2 gene that you have inherited okay now body chemistry has been also found important for the psychological disorders for example dopamine and serotonin are involved in muscle control okay memory sleep and emotional behavior so the four important neurotransmitters that we were referring to right now okay two you find uh, being mentioned here okay serotonin uh, would be the third one okay and basically it's the dopamine serotonin no uh, the balance or the imbalance which will influence most 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 of the psychological disorders okay now uh, 
you find uh, dopamine serotonin uh, no, uh, levels responsible for uh, things like uh, mood disorder, things like sleep disorders. Okay. You also find it even in say Parkinson's disorder for example, no? where you have grave uh, problem in terms of having muscle control, voluntary muscle control. The whole range of organic disorders such as uh, say mental retardation, such as uh, a degenerative disorders such as dementia or circular disorders or cerebro arteriosclerosis, okay, the head injury, okay, they all have the root in the anatomy, okay, the function of the brain and this anatomical and the functional uh, know, part of the brain actually largely depends on how you are genetically configured. So, problem with the genetic configuration, mutation of the gene and then you realize that many of the disorders come because of that reason. Uh, we will not go into the details, but uh, I must tell you that uh, for most of uh, the disorders uh, which are the byproduct of uh, one or the other type of uh, uh, biological reason, for most of them you have one or the other remedy that is available. Okay, for example, somebody who is uh, diagnosed with uh, ADHD, we have discussed ADHD here. Forget about this fact that uh, no, you have a thinner tissue in certain uh, selected regions of the brain. Okay, but there are uh, no uh, training uh, sessions. Okay, and remember these training sessions for ADHD is for the parents. Okay, so parents are trained how to handle children who ha who have ADHD. Okay, and basically all of this is basically the behavior uh, modification techniques. No? Finally, you have to uh, learn certain techniques with the help of which you can very generously handle these children. Okay. Unfortunately, uh, we do not have parents training program. Uh, my recent experience shows that uh, in the hospitals now, at least in the urban areas, good hospitals, uh, when uh, a prospective mother is uh, taken to the maternity ward. The doctors will counsel uh, or the sisters there will uh, counsel the all the attendants, attendants including the prospective mother and uh, they will ask know that for how many kids do you have and uh, there should not be an issue if you have a girl child. Okay. So, there is a counseling that I see in the urban localities in good hospitals, but this counseling is only for facilitating the acceptance of girl child. Okay. But you do not find a proper mechanism where you are already told that fine if you have a child with these type of things this is how you should handle the child. There is no such training uh, program uh, in our country. In uh, most of the western uh, countries you would find that there are proper training programs even for prospective parents. So, parenting skill which also includes that fine if you have children who have this, who have that, then how to handle them. Okay. Uh, especially uh, teachers who are handling the pre-primary school uh, children, no? uh, it is good to expose them also to the such type of uh, training sessions, how to handle children who show this type of problems in the class. Okay. Unfortunately, nowhere to the best of my knowledge, uh, as of now we have training programs for pre-primary uh, school teachers to handle children like this. But I must tell you that uh, you visit an expert and they will tell you that you know uh, meet us on weekends one, one of the weekdays for say uh, next one and a half month, two months and they will train you in how to handle children. Autistic children you have uh, you no know, such sessions similarly for MR children. Okay. There are a hope for most of these things now you have certain types of recommendations, okay, certain modifications that the experts would like the caregivers to have uh, in their behavior which will be very very uh, conducive for those children. Okay. We go to the second cause now that is the constitutional cause and now I am coming to a debatable issue which was uh, you know, initially uh, proposed in uh, the domain of personality psychology. Uh, but later on it was rejected. Okay. 
uh, although it was rejected you still find uh, you know at times one or two uh, you know researchers reporting something related to this. Therefore, we will devote very less time to understanding of this. Sheldon was a man what uh, he did was that he looked at the body structure of the human beings. No? And all he, he did was that he would ask uh, his uh, uh, clients to remove the clothes which today if you do it you will be put in the jail. Uh, okay, he used to ask his clients to remove the clothes and then he would take the uh, body measurement. No? So, all body parts he would measure diameter this you know, length height density these all types of uh, stuffs he would have. And finally, what he came forward with was basically that the people who used to visit him what type of body structure did they have and what type of temperament they had. Okay. And he finally classified people into three categories ectomorphs, mesomorphs and endomorphs okay. and you can see basically how they look like. Uh, then he attached the personality uh, profile to these types of body makeup. He said that ectomorphs okay, they have restrained and uh, they have they apply restraint and they are very self conscious people compared to the mesomorphs okay, who are noisy people who are aggressive, but you also find that they are active. And he said that when you meet an endomorph okay, they are very social people very sociable very relaxed in their life. Okay. Uh, but the later researches did not confirm that Sheldon's classification was accurate. Okay. It is not that if you are really plump okay, you will be very relaxed. Okay. You can have a relaxation session even when you are here in the class you feel drowsy you feel sleepy it has nothing to do with uh, whether you are a <laughs> endomorph or not. But I must tell you that uh, uh, if you go into the details of uh, no constitutional causes you will find many many types of classifications. One very interesting classification which is the recent addition was by uh, Fredman and Rosenman. Uh, what they, they are basically not uh, doctors uh, sorry they are not uh, psychiatrists they are actually cardiologists. These two cardiologists uh, they looked at the uh, what you call uh, profile of the patients who used to come to their clinic. So, basically what he had was a large number of patients who had problem with their heart okay. some type of cardiac attention is needed. And based on that they came forward with a type what they call as type A and type B people. Okay. One set of people who are very active, okay, a very volatile, very noisy, very aggressive, okay. but then they are also the people who are extremely susceptible to heart diseases. Compared to the second set of people relaxed, social, they do perform their task, but not so aggressively and actively the way the other type of people do, but they are the people okay, who are not prone to heart diseases. Okay. So, Rosenman and uh, Fradman's classification is the latest addition to such type of classification personality classification what is popularly in psychology called as type A and type B personalities. Okay. But I must tell you that this is not a sacrosanct type of uh, uh, classification. Uh, not so scientific the way the biological causes were talked about. Now, we come to the socio cultural causes uh, where you have uh, know a whole set of problems basically if you look at them you have the persistence of the violence okay, uh, which uh, threatens your survival or the survival of your loved ones okay. and because you have this persistent threat you show certain form of behavior which others will consider to be very weird. Okay. Uh, it reminds me of uh, a joke 
uh, although it was jokingly told, but uh, I think that you know there is some degree of seriousness attached to it and we will talk about it. Uh, the joke was that uh, somebody uh, who was a travel ticket examiner in the Indian Railways, okay, uh, after certain years of uh, his uh, duty as the TTE of a running train, okay, he used to uh, come home okay, and instead of uh, sleeping on the pillow, he would take out his shoes, put it on the bed and then rest his head over it. Okay because he was accustomed of you know traveling like this in the train because somebody will steal your shoe therefore you keep it you know under your uh, <laughs> head okay use it as a pillow in the running train and even though you have come back home instead of using a pillow you still use that okay and uh, this this was one part of the joke it has many uh, this is a long string it has many many things no uh, one thing was that after certain interval he would wake up and uh, you know ask so what is the time okay and this time was attached to the next station where he had to get down because his duty will be over okay there are many such things that was attached to this story but <clears throat> if you extend it to the persistent threat of uh, violence which can be inflicted either on you or your loved ones there would be a whole lot of change that you see in the behavior of the individual. Okay. Uh, problems that continue continues for long. You have been in the war inflicted zone for example and you realize that uh, uh, no, you have a frequent wake up sessions when you sleep. Okay. Uh, there is a great degree of acceptance for aggressive behavior whole lot of uh, no uh, great degree of misery in the behavior less degree of uh, no acceptance of strangers okay uh, great uh, prevalence of uh, uh, loss of faith that you have in others these are very commonly seen in people who are in the violence prone zone for long. Okay. We do not have the opportunity of having uh, the data from Afghanistan or Iraq as of now, but uh, in psychology we will find a whole lot of literature that is available on uh, what happened to the Vietnamese and also the US forces who participated in the Vietnam war, whole lot of description you will find there. Okay. In fact, I must tell you that uh, this area of clinical psychology became extremely enriched <coughs> during the second world war. Had second world war not taken place, probably this area of psychology would not have evolved the way it has evolved. Today globally the highest number of uh, degrees are awarded in clinical branch of psychology compared to any other branch globally. Okay. Discredit again goes to the war. If war would not have taken place, all these uh, growth and development would not have taken place. Okay. But there is a heavy price that you pay for it. If you are interested, uh, I must have shared this with you, I am just repeating it. Uh, when India was celebrating 50 years of independence, a study was uh, carried out in India, Pakistan and Bangladesh by uh, three set of uh, psychologists in these three countries and they were primarily looking at the changes in the behavior that took place in people who migrated 50 years back, who were forced to migrate. So from which country to which country you have migrated is not an issue. The fact that you were forced to leave your place in one country and you were forced to move to the other country, the psychological profile of uh, people and interestingly the result shows that irrespective of which religion and faith you belong to, from which country you were forced to flee to the other country, irrespective of this, there were permanent patterns in the behavior that was observed in the people who were spread in these three countries, who were forced to migrate from one place to the other. And the most striking of that was the distrust, you do not trust anybody, including your own family members okay. and that could be the worst. Okay. When you sleep on the bed, 
okay, with your spouse and you do not trust him or her, okay, whether you are going to be dazed, you are going to be killed, you are going to be stabbed, you are going to be robbed, what type of life would that be? <laughs> Extremely painful, no? Very recently I visited uh, one of the very prestigious organizations of this country, I would not name it. Uh, and the sad part I realized, which I had never thought, I had never thought of it. Uh, I had a meeting with one of the top rank officers there and he said that you know, all of us are under constant vigilance. So, we keep an eye on others and within the organization, someone has been deputed to keep an eye on me and all of us know that we are being watched round the clock. And then I asked him that, uh, that how do you develop friendship here? No? See, there would be a comradeship in the workplace. No? You are friendly to somebody and if I know that somebody is keeping an eye on me and the other person also knows that somebody is keeping eye on him or her and everybody knows that one is being watched all through, how do you trust people? Then this is an organization with a great degree of distrust. So, on the face I must be friendly, but inwardly I will always distrust. I do not know, perhaps he is the one who is supposed to keep an eye on me. Okay. I am in the restaurant and very curious know who is keeping an eye on me. Know. I am going with my family to an amusement park and know, looking at know, who is keeping an eye on me. Life would be terrible, I have never experienced a life like that. Okay. And somebody you know, imagine somebody who is recruited given this high stake uh, responsibility in a government job. Okay. And he invests a long career watching others and being watched, what type of life would this be? And there would be a great degree of psychological price that one would pay for it. It was basically the calculation of the psychological price because of the reason I had visited them. Okay. We will continue with this, okay. uh, we will continue with socio-cultural causes and then we will move to the next cause.